What is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be going over the if else ternary and the switch statements, which are actually control and flow statements. So let's get started immediately with the one that is most simple, and that is the if else statement. To get started, we're going to go ahead and create a variable called text. And this is going to simulate a user who inputs some text to a bot or to a chat system so that we can get a response. So we're just going to simulate that the user provides hey as the initial text. Now we can go ahead and specify what happens when the user inserts a special text. So here we're going to go ahead and type in if because that's the keyword we will be using. And we're going to insert the text variable and check if it's equal to hello. Then we can go ahead and print a special statement such as print hello there. So every time the user says hello, it's going to trigger this and it's going to say hello there. If we run the program, we're going to get no output because what we have provided is hey, and that is not the same as hello. So if we go ahead and type in hello, it's going to trigger the if statement and the program is going to respond with hello. But this kind of sucks. Let's try to add some more responses because we want the user to have a full experience. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and type in else if, which gives us a second chance to check something else. We can check if the text is equal to, let's say, how are you? Then we have to create another block as always. And inside here, we can go ahead and print, I'm fine, thanks. And let's just go add another one, such as else if text is equal to goodbye. We're going to go ahead and print see you later. And you may have noticed that I'm writing all of these in lowercase. And that's because in general, most programming languages differentiate a capital H from a lowercase h or actually from any lowercase letter. So it's important that we provide the exact same input. So if we insert hello with a uppercase h, the program will not recognize it and it won't print the output. So everything needs to be exactly the same. And there are functions out there that will help you with dealing with this. But just for the purpose of this if else statement, we're just going to keep everything simple and pretend that the user knows that they have to have lowercase letters. And if the program doesn't understand any of this, we can go ahead and provide an else block, which doesn't require a condition. It's kind of like a safety switch. So here we can type in, I did not understand what you wrote. So now we can write something such as as the D. And when we run the program, it's going to fall to the else statement. But if we type something such as goodbye, the program's going to say see you later, because it's going to first check if it's equal to hello, which it's not, then it's going to check is it equal to how are you? And eventually it will reach goodbye. And it's going to select that one. And because it's selected goodbye, it's going to use this print statement. And you can put a lot of code in these blocks. It doesn't have to just be one statement, but that just about covers the basics of the if else statement. And you can insert any data type you want in here. It just has to either return true or false for something to be executed. Next, I want to talk about the ternary operator, which is a very shorthand if else statement. And just to explain what that means, we're going to go ahead and create a variable called let internet connected, which just pretty much tells the user if the internet is connected or not. And we're going to say it's not, so we're going to provide false. Then we can go ahead and create another variable called the result. And if the internet is connected, we're going to use this question mark and we're going to return the text of connected. Then we're going to provide a colon. And the second part is the statement we want to provide if this is false. So if it is false, we will type in no internet. Now we can go ahead and print this result. So since I set it to false, it's going to provide no internet because this is the false side. If I actually change this to true, it's going to say, hey, it is true. So we're going to return the first option. And just to make this simple again, as you can see, we can do something simple as if 10 is more than one, we can pretend it's connected. Otherwise, if this statement is false, it's going to return no internet. So just remember to add an expression that returns either true or false. And you can use this shorthand statement, which is really cool because it's very easy to read. And the final keyword I want to cover in this video is the switch statement. And the switch statement is a very fast way of using if else for multiple cases. So let's go ahead and 
create a variable called text. So let text equal hello, as always. Next, we can go ahead and create this switch, which will take an argument such as text, or it can be a number or a Boolean, whatever you want. And inside here, we need to specify the cases. So the first case is going to be, if it is equal to hello, then we want to print hello there. Then we can also go, if the case is equal to goodbye, we will print see you later. If the case is equal to hey, we're going to go ahead and print hey is for horses. And finally, we want a default, which just specifies essentially the else statement of the switch. So here we just go ahead and type in default. And this is what happens if none of these conditions are met. We just print IDK or something similar, something very simple. But if we go ahead and run the program now, you're going to notice it will say hello there. And if we go ahead and change this to hey, it's going to say hey is for horses. It's going to check each one of these statements and it's going to print the one that it finds to be correct. But if we insert something that doesn't make sense, such as ABC, it's going to go to the default statement and the program is going to continue. But with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. In tomorrow's video, we're going to be covering the guard statement. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to look at them. Otherwise, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.